Hey guys, uh, we're here today with a very special guest. It's a world record holder, right? Yeah. 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 It's the fastest Audi in the world. <laughs> the most powerful uh, VR6 in the world. Very, very impressed. Friend, great friend here. How are you doing, Herbert? Yeah, I'm fine. So, man, you, you brought a car from Austria, and uh, how how's the feeling of racing in the US? Yeah, it's, this, it's it's awesome. Yeah. So last year we go into events, uh -huh. and the car works really perfect. Uh -huh. We set a new record. Okay. It's the yeah. Fastest, it's the fastest car in the world. Six seven, right? Six seven, right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah, now we are here for a demo session. That's awesome. We're, we're very excited to, to have you here and, and I'm glad to see the car racing in the US and showing the power of what you guys develop over there. It's for sure is the most powerful VR6 in the world. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah by far. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's so cool to see how, how smooth the engine runs and everything. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely impressive. Definitely impressive. Yeah, I'm very happy. Yeah, everything yeah. works so fine. That's good, man. Good see. Let's see if we see some 2000 horsepower now. Or so, and then run it at 60 for the rest of the run. Does that sound about right for you? Maybe for the first one, a little bit lower. We can do lower. Yeah. Guys has been showing his Audi TT in the world of uh, import drag racing and showing some great numbers. It's a world record holder, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's the fastest Audi in the world uh, with a 6.7. Six uh, yeah, we ran last year in, in Maryland, right? Right. Yeah. In the yeah. World Cup finals, so the car was performing very well in Europe or forever, but obviously there is very few tracks over there. Right, that you, you guys can actually uh, explore the potential of the car, yeah, right? Yeah. 
And uh, why do you want to, to bring the US to see, to show and compare with other competitive cars? And yeah, it was a it was a big dream for me uh -huh. to go with my race car uh -huh. to the states. Oh, that's and and last year um, I'm, I make it through. Uh -huh. So so we visited uh, the World Cup finals, and it was really an awesome event. Uh -huh. And and. Yeah, and I think this year we will also go to some events, and that's great. And that's cool that you can keep the car here and keep the race. Yeah, come to race over here. Uh, the, and I let's explain some of the car because this is obviously most of the audience here is not co uh, familiar with. Yeah. So it's an Audi TT, but it's a full tube chassis, or is a have, uh, it's pretty much a full tube chassis, right? Yeah, it's a full tube chassis, yeah. Um, it's all-wheel drive, but I noticed that it has a like a, a four-link in it, like a normal rear-wheel yeah. drive car would have. So that's yeah. kind of unique. I've never seen that on an all-wheel drive car before. Um, obviously, you remove the drivetrain for the front-wheel drive stuff just for the dyno, right? Um, oh, and for the pull up, yeah. Yeah, and for, oh, it's uh, it's on a, like electronic on a switch or something. Yeah. Okay, I don't um, know that. Do you have a, is that clutch or? Uh, oh, this, yeah, it's, it's um, like here. the transfer case is from a Nissan GTR. Ah, okay. And there's a clutch inside. Uh -huh. and, and with pressure, I can close this clutch. Uh -huh. And then it's a front wheel, uh, all wheel drive car. Okay. And then you install it a Liberty transmission, like a clutchless transmission and yeah. adapted to that. Yeah, yeah. And how about the engine? Watch, I know you, you designed the block and manufactured the billet block, right? Yeah. Is that something? What's the limit on the stock blocks in the VRS, the VR6? So on the stock block, um, 1,300, 1,350 uh -huh. is, is really the limit because because uh, the crack, the um, uh, the main bearing, the main um, yeah, the main bore crack. Yeah, right there. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So we built this. Is that a billet crank or stock crank? Yeah, it's also billet crank. Billet exactly. crank. Yeah. And does the, the stock crank hold more power than that, or I mean, not the stock? What you mentioned, like 1300, or the 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 we entering on about 1500 uh -huh. starts to to twist. Uh -huh. And yeah. So it's and definitely a very unique sounding uh, yeah. engine. Yeah. It's some these engines are some of the best sounding ones out there. Yeah. These two JZs. Yeah. And a couple of the other ones, but this is this is not factory displacement. It's a stroker, or like how how many liters is it? No, it's uh, de-stroked. It's de-stroked. De yeah. Okay. Uh, also, normally uh, this engine has 3.2 liter. Okay. And and we make a little bit um, shorter, um, uh, shorter stroke. stroke yeah. And and how how is the cylinder head? Because since you have the intake runners with different lengths, mm -hmm. what that make what that affects of the performance. Or yeah, um, the problem is on this VR6 you have long intakes, you have short intakes, and, okay. and also the same on the on the exhaust port. Uh -huh. So so it's very difficult um, to find the right setup um, for the fuel mixture, uh -huh. and um, also the EGTs are also um, different within the cylinders. Yeah, because it's almost like having an EGT placed in different lengths on the exhaust pan. Yeah. yeah, technically because. The, yeah, the only one, one option would be literally offsetting them on the exhaust to kind of have the same length. Of yeah, uh, we have also a different timing on the camshaft uh, for these cylinders. Ah, okay, so the camshaft is actually different. That's yeah. from stock or that's when, when something you use? It's did? custom built. Ah, it's custom built. Yeah. And that's a, that's that's a big, that's a big uh, difference. I, From what I remember, I thought uh, these had a timing chain and not a timing belt. Is this something that you adapted, or do the newer ones have a belt instead of a chain? Yes, right. So the the rear engines have on the back a timing chain. Okay. And but this was very difficult with the with the bell housing, and and also um, to keep the head off to adjust the timing. Mm -hmm. um, so we swapped it to a timing belt, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's very cool. easy. That's cool. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of very custom one-off specific pieces here and it, it it kind of makes you kind of in a little world of your own not let alone having a, a vr6 at this power level but it's very unique even in itself there's no other vr6 like this one right? no, no. Yeah. and besides of that i see obviously you have all the fuel tech products <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> 600 controlling the engine the transmission 
the EGT8 for the EGTs, uh, the Wideband Nano, the FT Spark, the Picking yeah. Holds, uh, pretty much all all the products to control that. Right? And uh, how it has our injectors too. I don't know. If yes, you said only, that. that's another, another interesting thing. Is only six injectors, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, six. Yeah. That's one thing. A lot of people, especially in the import, uh, is now uh, adapting and understanding how better is to only have one injector per cylinder. So even the the fuel rail simplification, the wiring, mm -hmm. you can easily uh, identify an injector problem or anything like. Right? Yeah. It's definitely definitely interesting. And I saw the dirty cycle. It's really kind of safe, still below 70%. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do this way. Let's see some of the runs you guys done, uh, previous in this day. And uh, then we come back and talk after for the final pass, which we we are we're very excited about. Uh, that's uh, 2.1 bar. Uh, yeah, that's uh, 2.1 Oh, sorry. It's two and a half. It's a two and a half? Two and a half. Two and a half bar. 2.5, 2.6 bar. <laughs> PSI is 30. 39. Oh, yeah. Oh, bar. In this area where the turbo is spooling, typically where you would be on your two step, mm -hmm. um, it adds a lot of fuel. And then during the run from 2.2 bar on, it takes out. 5% and it almost gets to the target. Do you want to adjust for this or do you want to leave it the way it is because it's been running? Normally I'm assuming like if, if you look on your two-step stuff, I bet you you have fuel here. Yeah, you have a little bit of fuel. Uh, no, actually don't, you have negative. Um, but yeah, here, 5,900 and two bar, it adds 20%. What? And it's almost at the target. Yeah, but the police could adjust this. Yeah, I can adjust. What would you yeah, like? It's only a little Not bit. too much. How much is a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to find that for us. 4.4? <laughs> It'll be 4.2. Oh, Six? Six? So it's unstable. So 6.0? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the the sooner it speed goes down. Huh? We believe that the wastegate is so large that as soon it opens, it drops it so much back uh, pressure yeah, you that see it on the, the turbo, turbo speed, speed goes down. Turbo speed follows. It's a 160, a 60. Yeah, it's a 60, but it's in like perfect placement. So it's like dropped. right on it the end dropped. of the bend, so it drops. Way too much flow. A lot of flow. That low turbo spin. When it blows off, Man, you, you can feel make like a That's what we're telling you. 2400. Like, go, Back go. pressure is less than one. Yeah. Man, it, it will make 2400. <laughs> <laughs> Six bar, it's fine. <laughs> I was about to say, when it blows off, you can feel it in the floor. It's yeah, such a great picture. It's like, you can look.
Okay, you guys saw we we just made a 2,000 wheel horsepower DR6 pass here run, and this is for sure the most powerful uh, VR6 in the world. It's something very very impressive. I, I wanna congratulate you. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's not just building the car, building the engine, but literally designing the block, designing yeah. the, the, the changes on the camshaft. Uh, that's so many much work behind that. Yeah. Uh, how many years you've been working this platform? You got on this engine uh, ten years, eleven years. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah I know, and, and I, I bet every time you learn about something, you actually had yeah. to think about and develop. And that's one thing uh, I believe is different for a culture, a culture in Europe, in my opinion, than US, especially because in Europe you have to design or think almost by yourself, right? Yeah. It's not something you can buy on the shelf, because there's not that much racing in this level. So even if somebody done a, something, you almost have to adapt or recreate, right? Yeah. And in US, we see a lot more of uh, a lot of same combo, same uh, design. It's, it's more common for, you know, everybody could get a, a, I don't know, say an LS engine and buy a package that is already well thought out. Yeah. So to be able to do that with something like this and literally design your own camshaft, so you have your own engine block that you've made and whatever other components that you've yeah. made, it's, it kind of really brings the, the hot rodding aspect of this back yeah. um, that, that is, you know, really, really unique and really cool to see people really putting all their heart and soul into something like this yeah. and let's talk about the technical of, the, of this pass maybe let's show some of the is there any secrets on the data log uh, <laughs> one of the first things i noticed on this is there is so much turbo left yeah um the, the turbo speed is like low for, for that turbo the back pressure is still low yeah there is so much more potential that you have to make more power than yes that. so just bring a few numbers like the 2041 wheel horsepower was accomplished with uh, revving pretty much like 9,000 RPM, right? Uh, yeah, just under, yeah. yep. Uh, and about 4.2 bar, which is uh, 63 pounds of boost, of yeah. boost pr problem. Yeah. But like you say, the back pressure for... is like th three and a half. Yeah, it was literally, is below one to one, so it's making less back pressure. So this one is one of... It, this was one of the biggest updates you've made after work up pilot. Right, right there. Yeah. You put the big, the, the new turbo, right? Yeah. That's the uh, Precision 88 XPR. Yeah. And exactly. uh, it's definitely impressive how much performance it does. It's pulls and impressive it made. I, by my experience, I would say you probably have 500 horsepower left here. Oh, no, <laughs> easily. Yeah, because the turbo speed is only 70 something. 79. 79,000 wheels. Uh, 79,000. RPM on the turbo speed. So these turbos we've seen them running 120,000. Be, yeah, between 90 and 120,000 shaft yeah. speed. Okay. So yeah. there's there's a significant amount of boost yeah. that you could turn up if you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Step by step. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't mind us. We're just being a bad influence. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it's the EGTs are all even with the different length yeah. stuff yeah. that you were talking about. Yeah. The EGTs are all very similar. Yeah, but one thing is important, in, especially in a case like this, you show, we, sh we, we should not trim the fuel per the EGT reading, because obviously the EGTs are giving you some misreadings Correct. because of the lengths. Right so the EGTs will pretty much tell you if you have a cylinder dropping or a, or a cylinder dieseling where it takes off. So it's more like a, that kind of information than actually trying to, to adjust the, the fuel per cylinder, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but even uh, we've made several runs and looked at the spark plugs, mm -hmm. and they're all very even, like very, very similar to each other. And really, there was minimal individual mm -hmm. cylinder trims. So whatever you did mechanically to this yeah. thing is working. No, I, I was impressed with <laughs> the, the camshaft uh, difference between cylinders. That definitely makes a, that kind of result. Mm -hmm. and that's probably where you find you found the secret, mm -hmm. a very important secret about these engines. No, and, and honestly, the data and the engine have run so smooth because here in the dyno, we, we can always feel uh, some cars, they vibrate a lot. Uh, it's just part of the combo. It's like a Pro Charger one is usually, okay. Okay. they vibrate the whole building. It's usually even making some same power, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we feel like the engine are so smooth. One of the smoothest engines in this power level I ever yeah. ever seen. 
Right. It almost like if you were if you were standing outside and you heard the, uh, a run, yeah. and then walked in and saw the screen, yeah. you would have no idea that yeah. this thing would yeah. ever make two thousand horsepower. It just does it so effortlessly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, amazing, amazing. So, are you happy with the results? Yeah. Very happy. Okay. Yeah. So where where's the next track? You guys, you guys can see you racing. Yeah, maybe we will uh, test the car this weekend uh -huh. with this new setup. Okay. And uh, the next bigger event we plan for the summer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank really you. Really great to see you, man. And, and thank uh, you for your time. No, thank you. you. Well, thanks for coming. I enjoyed thanks hanging out help. with you and getting to look at all this cool stuff. So it was a it was a good day today. And yeah, Hubert is thank also you. one of our very important dealers in Europe as well. Been doing great for us. So yeah. we appreciate and thank you a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. See you guys. Hope you guys enjoy seeing something very very different on our hub dyno today. And let uh, put the comments below and let us know if you need any questions, specific questions. We'll make our best to to answer and get the answers from Hubert. Thank you. Thank you.